Hello and welcome back, and that's right, it's time for another Before You Buy. Today we're going to look at this, the Samsung 990 Evo, Samsung's first Gen 5 consumer drive. We've already done a huge review on this device, digging deep, deep, deep into the reasons for the architecture, what we liked, what we didn't like, benchmarks, testing, the works. This video, on the other hand, is meant to be the much, much briefer point-by-point -point version, where I give you five reasons why you should consider getting the 990 Evo SSD for your PC or Mac setup and five reasons why you might want to sit on the fence or just go for another drive entirely. So let's crack straight on with number one. Conversation about things that would interest everybody. You know, nothing about memory or RAM. <laughs> memory? is RAM. <laughs> so straight away, if you are looking for a low power drive, if you are looking for a low heat drive, you are looking for a drive with low consuming sustained performance, this could well be the drive for you. This is designed, unlike a lot of SSDs in the Gen 5 arena that we talked about in recent years, the next storage, when we were talking about the A-Data drive, when we were talking about the Fizon Maximum, all of these drives were about peak performance. Maybe not sustained performance, but certainly peak performance and high power consumption. These are your high-end gamer, highfalutin, LED, RGB, PC nightmare type drive. It is designed with much more compact use case scenarios in mind. Modern generation uh, laptops, modern generation MacBooks, and in the years to come, as we're seeing things get smaller and smaller and smaller, and including mini PCs like this one, we are finding systems that have to be way, way, way more conscious of the power consumption, the heat generation, and ultimately, when you're seeing a lot more of the CPUs that are rocking out the gate there from AMD, but more precisely Intel, that are minimizing a lot of the components down to mobile processors more than anything we're seeing more of the 12th and even 13th generation series of intel core processors start to arrive in mobile soc versions which are much more scaled down for size and therefore are again hugely aware of uh, the abilities of heat generation power consumption internally and its detrimental effect on the internal components and architecture this drive fits into those scenarios way, way better than all of these, which are going to be capped, that are going to be bottlenecked, that are going to be drawing too much power and ultimately end up with a mini PC system that might die well on its ass. Conversation about things that would interest everybody. You know, nothing about memory or RAM. <laughs> memory is RAM. <laughs> Digging more into that PCIe allocation, it's worth highlighting that this drive, for those that are going to be using either third-party devices or their own custom-built stuff with surgical levels of PCIe allocation, this will bring something new to the party which you may see the benefits of. What do I mean by surgical PCIe generate, uh, allocation? Well, much like the mini PC we mentioned earlier on, the ways to get everything to work inside this in such a compact fashion and with a mobile CPU that has been uh, that is built on the architecture of a much bigger PC tower allocate, um, um, architecture, when that is brought down, the number of lanes, which is what you bolt on all of your hardware components for the CPU to communicate with, reduces drastically. That's why in a system like this that has got an M2 NVMe slot ready to put a PCIe in, it's not a Gen 4 times 4 slot, it's a Gen 4 times 2 slot inside there. The result is, if you took a Gen 4 SSD like this one, a Gen 4 times 4 SSD, this is the Samsung 980 Pro, which has a reported sequential performance of 7,000 megabytes per second um, read and write 5,000 to 5,500 megabytes per second sequential write. If you put this drive in a Gen to, uh, Gen 4 times 2 allocated slot, you are going to have that speed reduced down. Now, as we're seeing newer machines roll out on the market with Gen um, 5 speeds, those Gen 5 lanes are still going to need to be reduced down in speed within this architecture. The result is that in this system, in a Gen 5 times 2 allocation, this drive is going to be better suited to allow you to take, take advantage of all those additional lanes. The same goes with RAID cards that are arriving on the scene or PCIe upgrade cards that are rocking out the gate that allow you, both of which, by the way, are time 16 whereas this card on a time 16 slot has got two PCI, sorry, two M.2 NVMe slots. This has eight. But the only reason it can have eight is it needs to spread down those M2 NVMEs. Now there are cards on the market, upgraded versions of this, 
that will give you times four on each of those, thanks to the card having um, additional PCIe switch components on board. We can still lead to other saturation, but the majority of cards we see here on the market, a great example, a great example on the market would be this, QNet with their QM2 card series, which is allowing users with a single PCIe slot to take advantage of combined 10GBE and M2 NVMe slots on here. But the thing is, they can't allocate times for speeds on a lot of the M2s, because of the limited number of lanes either being delivered to the PCIe slot there or the whole system not able to give time 16 which to be allocated across the whole system for the number of bandwidth and the number of the speed allocated to each of those lanes. That's just another reason why with more curated and surgical PCIe allocation happening more and more on external cards and internal systems why this drive may be very desirable to those users. Conversation about things that would interest everybody. You know, nothing about memory or RAM. <laughs> memory is RAM! <laughs> and moving slightly away from the drive in of itself, it's worth highlighting that the drive is also managed by Samsung Magician, a client tool for PC and Mac systems that is still arguably, to date, the best desktop client tool for hard drives or SSDs out there. It isn't just about managing firmware updates, it can run quite well customized benchmarks, run secure erase on there, you can run a lot of stuff to do with uh, encryption on drives. All of the control of your drive is done via that desktop software there. And when you do look at alternative drives in the market, other M2 NVMEs out there, SSDs, whatever, even hard drives, although they arrive with clause like Seagate C tools there and Adata's wizard there, they're not as good and not as comprehensive as the Samsung Magician tool, which is for um, regular updates and gives you way more information about not only your Samsung drive, but other third-party drives out there. So not that's software you can get without buying the drive. But to really make the most of that software, it's utilizing Samsung's own drives. That combination of the hardware and the software together is managed and deployed in that GUI better than anywhere else out there. Conversation about things that would interest everybody. You know, nothing about memory or RAM. <laughs> Memory is RAM. <laughs> Circling back round to that subject of Gen 5 SSDs in general, I think we all have to at least acknowledge, and by all I mean everyone, we have to acknowledge that Gen 5 SSDs, for all of that peak highfalutin Johnny Big Bananas performance we talked about, I hope that card's not broken, all of that performance we talk about, the sustained performance on these drives, is a bit pants when you put them inside we've got here a next storage drive this is the second generation next storage gen 5 it can get up to 14 gigabytes per second 14,000 megabytes per second not for long it can sustain that performance for quite a short period and again those are artificial synthetic results but nevertheless this drive will shoot down in performance to between one and two thousands very quickly it becomes oversaturated the same goes with the a data legend 97 that we looked at the same goes even to a lesser extent arguably with the uh Fison max 14 um still hate that name ssd here which although hit peaks of 14 gigabytes per second how long the system could hold that performance was exceedingly negligible. Now, part of that is the oversaturation of the drives themselves and the cache that's on board, but also the surrounding client environment is just not Gen 5 ready, which circulates back once again to that subject there of PCIe allocation and um, concerns over power consumption and heat generation, something that this drive is clearly being designed to circumnavigate there. Conversation about things that would interest everybody. You know, nothing about memory or RAM. <laughs> memory is RAM. <laughs> this last point is something that on my full review of this drive, I ended right at the end, but it is a very, very valid point. And that is, in the future, in the next couple of years, you may not even buy this drive. You've just got it anyway. This drive is so OEM like it's unreal. When you buy a laptop from PC World, when you buy a lot of hardware from reputable uh, distributors and retailers out there, you more often not find when you open the device up, you open them up and there's a Samsung inside. There'll be a Samsung Evo inside there, like a 960 or 970 or something inside. You will find Samsung drives. That is because more often than not, Samsung as a branded drive, them and WD are the most 
commonly used SSDs inside your day-to-day -day appliances there. Maybe it's because they have such a huge reputation in day-to-day um, -to -day domestic white goods that users have. Now, I don't just mean your kitchen and your fridge, although a lot of those are starting to rock out the gate with SSDs, by the way. But nevertheless, despite this video being about a should you buy or before you buy, it's worth highlighting that it's going to be a lot of you out there due to this drive's more domestic level approach and this drive's designed towards a lot of these future hardware client devices being more power, energy, and lane efficient, you're probably going to have one of these and not even buy it anyway. You're just going to have it inside your system. So don't be surprised by that. But all of those good things aside, I think we have to address some real big elephants in the room and go through the five reasons why you might want to sit on the fence about this drive just a wee bit longer. I'm sorry, are you from the past? <laughs> if I had to go for an overarching theme for the five reasons why you shouldn't go for this drive, I think we could generally put them in a bubble known as this should have come out a year, year and a half ago. And that is something that's going to keep coming up there. So cracking on with our first one, this drive is DRAMless. You may not be aware of this, but a lot of the SSDs we buy in the market, Gen 5, Gen 4, Gen 3, go back all the years, they all arrive with not dissimilar hardware architecture to a computer. They have a CPU, if you will, in the terms of an SSD. That is known as the controller. That is basically the brains of the drive that's managing all of those hardware components passing through the drive at all times. The controller there at the top. Then... The drives themselves have got storage. In this case, it's known as Flash or NAND, and that's where your data lives. In the case of this 2TB model, we've got a couple of modules there. They are 133 layer um, 3D TLC NAND there. And that core, by the way, is the Piccolo uh, 6 core 32 bit ARM processor. But also, much like a computer, normally SSDs have a bit of memory. They've got a bit of memory on there acting as a buffer to handle stuff on the go. This drive does not. It has a big old empty parking space there in the middle because this drive takes advantage of something called host memory buffer. It takes advantage of a small area of memory on your client, PC or Mac system instead of using it on the drive. That makes the drive more power efficient, makes it more cost efficient, makes it more component efficient. It's great, right? <sighs> well, one you might have a client system that doesn't support host memory buffer. Maybe it's a PCIe or expansion or rate card that doesn't allow the pass-through to use the client host memory. Maybe your operating system, maybe a gaming rig or third-party customized rig will not allow the SSD to use onboard memory from your own you know, RAM or your PC there. The result is this drive will bottleneck real damn quickly in those scenarios. Additionally, this drive rocking out from Samsung in the Gen 5 arena for consumers, DRAMless, you know, would be good if Fizon hadn't already, almost a year ago, released their, or revealed, and now formally, physically revealing, the Fizon E31T um, DRAMless controller. Now, that controller provides performance numbers higher than this drive. A Gen 5 DRAMless um, controller already exists. We've seen brands like Tin Group and Patriot and very, very soon uh, Fizon themselves rocking out with SSDs that are DRAMless with higher performance than this. So not only are DRAMless drives a great deal more niche than users might think because you have to rely on your system supporting it, although most domestic OSs actually do, but moreover, this isn't even the best example of a DRAMless Gen 5 drive. I'm sorry, are you from the past? <laughs> Next up, we've got to talk about it. The performance numbers on this drive aren't all that. It rocks out of the gate with a peak sequential, well, so synthetic sequential read performance there of 5,000 megs and a peak sequential write performance of 4,000 megabytes per second with a 4K random IOPS read rated at 700,000 and 4K write random IOPS at 8,000. Now, those numbers might sound good on their own, but... We've got Gen 5, uh, Gen 4 drives on the market right now, Gen 4 times 4, with 7,000 megs. We're seeing 7,200, 300, 400 megabytes per second. Moreover, in terms of um, uh, those IOPS here, we're seeing Gen 4 drives rock out the gate with 1 million, 1.3, 1.4 million 4K random read-write IOPS there. This drive, those numbers, they're not 2024 numbers. I get it. It's DRAMless. I get it. 
the DRAM, I'm uh, sorry, the uh, NAND flash, the 133 layer um, NAND there. I get there's only two modules and it's going double-sided there. I get that the drive rocks out the gate with that Gen 5 times 2 thing with alternate Gen 4 times 4 on a Gen 4 times 4 lane. But that last point there, if I'm sticking this in a Gen 4 times 4 system, I already know there are DRAMless Gen 4 times 4 SSDs in the market that outperform this. I already know there are Gen 4 times 4 typical drives at a lower price point than this drive that give me higher performance numbers than this. Hell, I reviewed this on the channel a little while ago. This is the Lexar. This is the NM790. This is a Gen 4x4 drive. This indeed is DRAMless. It's using an unusual controller that I've not seen elsewhere. But the fact still remains, this is a DRAMless drive hitting 7,400 megabytes per second there on Gen 4x4. So for a lot of consumers, remember, this is a consumer-focused drive. Those are not acceptable numbers, even if you factor in the bifurcation and the PCIe curated allocation in some scenarios. I'm sorry, are you from the past? <laughs> this next complaint, I would argue, is a little bit more of an industry thing, more than it is to do with you, the individual or average consumer, but I do think it's worth highlighting. This drive just feels like something that should have been smaller and in a Steam Deck. My point is, if... Samsung had rocked this out the gate at a 2230 length or 2242 length, which is a little smaller scale M2 NVMe um, SSD for Steam Deck or for one of the many um, a handheld PCs that have rocked out the gate to capitalize on the popularity of the Steam Deck. This architecture in that setup would make so much sense to me, it's unreal. Steam Deck already is curating and you know, being very selective about the PCIe lanes it can afford to storage base and the scale and the power consumption. In that world, this drive is perfect. In that scenario, this drive is bloody ideal. But he can't use it because it's 2280 length. You can't put it inside those machines. This drive feels in every way like it's perfect for that deployment. But because they made it 2280, despite the absolutely useless space here in the middle where DRAM should live, this drive can't be used in there. And for me, that's a bloody travesty. I'm sorry, are you from the past? <laughs> capacity. Why is this drive only available in 2TB maximum capacity? Now, I get it. For all of my criticisms about this, this is a niche drive. I get it. But if you're already using this in compact systems, if you're already using this in more curated systems where they're trying to be as efficient as possible, it seems maddening to me that this drive has not arrived out the gate with a 4TB version. It's not like there isn't room for the NAND to allocate two more blocks of that 133, 133, not even 176 layer 3D TLC NAND on this drive. If you're already working in a highly efficient scenarios for deployment, then getting the biggest capacity possible within those smaller spaces is going to be paramount. And if you are someone for which this 5x2 slash 4x4 self-defining um, drive is going to be ideal for you, it seems maddening to me that they've locked it in at 2TB there. Maybe it's a limitation of the DRAMless controller there. Maybe it's to do with that uh, reliance on host memory buffer, but still, 2TB maximum capacity for this drive out the gate is woefully low, given users that are going for this drive are going to, if they're locked in on this, 4TB would have been a bare minimum for them. I'm sorry, are you from the past? <laughs> and finally, this is a little bit more about Samsung generally, and this harks back to the start of my five reasons against. When I said that this drive feels like it should have come out a year, maybe even two years ago, this isn't the first time I've said that about a Samsung product. In the last 12 months alone, Samsung have rocked out products that, as good as they are, they would have been great a year to two years ago. In my hands here, the T5 Evo. This is this very small scale 8TB drive that is utilizing standard 5 gig USB connectivity, not even 10 gig USB 3.2 Gen 2. This is a standard 5 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 1 drive that's got 8TB of maximum, maximum storage, but I'm limited to 450 
maybe 460 megabytes per second, even though it's clearly using M2 NVMe capabilities inside. It's the USB um, switch inside the component inside that's capping me down on the component. The same goes, the T9. The T9 is an SSD here that goes up to 4 TB of capacity, but the maximum performance is 2000 megs. Why is that? They went for USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2. No one's using that. They're all using USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. With Thunderbolt 5 starting to peek its head over the horizon. I get it. They're trying to cover their bets. They're trying to go for efficiency and scale, something we talked about over and over again. But time and time again in the last 12 months, Samsung, at least in the consumer sector, not in the enterprise sector, by the way, over there, it's banging. But at the consumer home uh, sector, they are releasing products that feel like they're a year to a year and a half, maybe even two years behind the curve. Have they been sitting on these and they've been at R&D too long? Or are Samsung playing it safe, thinking that hardware components are now going to be scaling down in the ways that we've discussed? I just find it really irritating that when I've talked about Samsung here on the channel, the products they've been rolling out for consumers or even, you know, smaller business prosumers just feel a little behind the curve. But ultimately, if you see the benefits of a curated drive with power consumption at the forefront in terms of uh, pre um, lowering those numbers, sorry, for power consumption, lowering those numbers for heat generation, lowering overheads and lengthening sustained performance numbers, this could be a good drive for you for those curated setups there. But I think for anyone looking at day-to-day -day Gen 4 or even Gen 5 drives, this may not well be for you. I recommend you check out the full review below we've got all of the benchmarks we've gone into a lot more detail about all of these things apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time